Water, earth, fire, air. Everyone has a favorite bending style, but which one is the most powerful? We're here to find out. Before we start, let's make it clear that all four forms are extremely powerful in their own right. So even though this is a power ranking, it's a very close one. Okay, let's get into it. Here is our bending style power ranking from weakest to strongest. To start out our list at number four, it's fire bending. Fire is obviously a dangerous element, and it seems to be the most difficult to control. As Master Zhang Zhang said, A rock will not throw itself, but fire will spread and destroy everything in its path if one does not have the will to control it. Fire bending is a very offense heavy style. Benders can shoot jets of flame, throw fire bombs, use fire whips, and even use the flames as a sort of jet propulsion. Since fire bending is pure heat and energy, a skilled fire bender can create raw electricity effectively striking their opponents with the power of a bolt of light. Another rare technique allows benders to attack their opponents with their minds, causing combustion at whatever point they're looking at. This is an almost instantaneous move that's extremely difficult to predict or avoid. On the downside, simpler firebending techniques seem to be more easily blocked or redirected by all three of the other bending forms. At the same time, firebending lacks any real defense of its own forcing its users to constantly take a more offensive approach. Number three is airbending. This element can sometimes be underestimated due to the peaceful nature of most traditional airbenders, but don't be fooled. When necessary, airbenders can exhibit remarkable power. One of their most apparent skills is their ability to stay light on their feet, really light. They can easily withstand falls from great heights without being harmed and jump to incredible heights with unmatched speed. With a little assistance, most airbenders can ride the wind gliding across the sky with ease. And though the ability is rare, thanks to the teachings of Guru Lahima, it's also possible for an airbender to actually fly freely without the assistance of a glider. In combat, airbending can prove to be a tricky form to defeat. Airbenders are generally trained to use air in unique and unpredictable ways, making it an even more difficult thing to defend against. They have the ability to control the temperature of their bodies to withstand extreme cold. Airbenders are able to warm themselves with only their breathing draw the air out of an opponent's lungs, and practice spiritual projection. That's right. They can leave their physical form behind and appear anywhere in the world in seconds, making airbending that much more valuable. Waterbending is number two on our list, and this one is powerful. An experienced waterbender has a full level of control over the water in their environment. This includes any bodies of water, falling rain, water from inside plants, moisture in the air, and in some cases, even the water in their opponent's bodies. This is called blood bending, and while it's a rare skill and usually requires a full moon, when a waterbender is capable of it, they are a true force to be reckoned with. On top of that, waterbending can be used to switch between defense and offense with ease, allowing waterbenders to attack aggressively while maintaining their defensive position. To complement their defensive abilities, waterbenders also possess remarkable healing abilities, which only adds to their resilience. And fortifying both their offensive and defensive abilities is the relative ease at which they can state change. They can almost instantly change water to ice, which can quickly be used for fierce attacks, a powerful shield, or a handy means to immobilize an opponent. The one downside to waterbending is its reliance on the availability of water. Sure, we mentioned that water can be drawn from a lot of places, but even a powerful waterbender is gonna have a rough time in a dry desert. Finally, we have, you guessed it, earthbending. Coming in at number one. Let's start with the obvious. Earthbenders control rocks. With apparent ease, an earthbender can lift and throw boulders the size of a small house. A very difficult thing to defend against, which has the potential to swiftly end the battle. They can also control small, denser rocks that can be fired much more quickly at multiple enemies. But that's just the surface level of earthbending. A skilled master has countless abilities at their disposal. Earthbenders have been known to create rock armor to completely encase themselves, skate along across large mounds of earth, instantly trap opponents in immovable prisons of rock, launch themselves to airbender-like heights using the earth below them, and the Dai Li have even demonstrated the ability to magnetize themselves to nearby rock, allowing them to effectively climb the walls and ceiling. Like the airbenders, Earthbenders have also been seen coming up with creative uses for their craft. If you are standing on any sort of earth, they can quickly change it to quicksand. If you make even the slightest move, they can sense it through the vibrations in the ground, and they can even use those vibrations to tell if you're lying. Once they were able to be contained in metal, kept separate from any earth for them to bend, 
That is, until metal bending was invented, which gave rise to countless new techniques and an entire new form of earthbending. But possibly the most powerful technique available to earthbenders? State changes. Remember how waterbenders can change water from solid to liquid? Well, powerful earthbenders can do the same thing to rock. And what's liquid rock? That's right, we're talking lava bending. Earthbenders can exhibit full control over liquid hot molten rock, using it almost as a waterbender uses water. This kind of attack is nearly impossible to defend against. I can't beat this guy! It's like I'm giving him ammo! And while lava bending is rare, it's possible for an earthbender to pick up the skill with, well, no training at all. In fact, Bo Lin is able to lava bend on his very first try. And from that point forward, he seems pretty proficient in the skill, with no practice whatsoever. While each bending form has countless powerful techniques, it seems that Earth, the element that is supposed to be the most stubborn, is actually the most versatile, which puts it at number one on our list. Do you agree with our list? Let us know in the comments below.